G'day, welcome to Supercoach360. How are you going? It's your boy Jazzy J. We're in the coach's box. Talk all things Supercoach for another week. Uh, massive week this week, really. It, it's the start of the actual game. The money changes hands, and now the long season begins. Uh, how do you best maximise your money at this early point of the season so that way you can afford everyone you want down the road? Massive round two, obviously. Injuries. Something else you got to remember. You got to remember to factor in injuries because I don't know about you guys, but I could use six trades this week because so far I've got absolutely squat. Um, it looks like I'm going to miss out on a couple of uh, you know what I feel like are essential cheapies that I'd love to be able to get, but I just can't. Um, yeah, and I got, I got hit with injuries. I think most of us did this week. It was a horrible week for that. Um, I think I got I got Brandon Smith. Didn't, I have Ford, but I didn't play him. Uh, cop KP, rough one. I cop Carm Pereira's nine in the first round. So it's been a rough five. round of scores. Five, that's right. Down dated to five. G'day, Con. How you doing, bud? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, me. Oh, horrible. Lamenting Sounds my like super coach fantastic. season. That's it, bro. Two weeks no, in. No, I, I just good a week as you, bud. I saved all my trades week one, thinking, yeah, that nah, three's going to get me through. Week two. Super coach, can I please use those three trades from week one now? I need six this week. So I had Nels go down. Ward's been hit with an injury. Um, boys just dud. KP went down for me. Um, and I also want to sell Nathan Teddy. So Right. Now, that's the other big burning question for this week. That's for sure. Do you sell Nathan? Do you sell Teddy? Uh, everyone's talking about it. Now, I'm pretty sure I sat here last week and everyone called me an absolute fool for even considering You were it. crazy last week. This week, not so crazy. Yeah, right. And to be honest, if I'd actually pulled the trigger on it last week... Would have been brilliant. Part of, yeah, that's it. So, cause you would have done a Lukey. Because I couldn't have done it. I can't do it now. So I was onto something. And then once again, I let you guys talk me out of it. It's great to Back have these chats each week. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's hard, man. It is. It, it is. I know. You sit you got there and all you go, these things going through your head, and you're like, mm, "But I really want to do this," and but they say, "Yeah, that's it." So I was like, "No, nah, you know what? I'll conserve the trade. I'll wait the extra week." I was umming and ahhing about moving to Jerome Hughes last week. Um, didn't really miss out on much there. So oh, so he didn't score great. I can't imagine he did. I mean, I'm pretty they... sure he did, lads. If you really have a look at it, he didn't do too badly. How did he do? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he got. Oh, okay. Good day, well. Bergs. How you doing? Chiming in, but thanks for that, mate. You know how I get. I like to just get in. And well, out, they scored twelve points. If he had to do any well in Supercase, he had to be involved in all twelve of them. Uh, he scored. Uh, Holy Boom. shit! Boom! <laughs> so he did all right. So he must. Damn, he must have so scored the tries or set them up. Yeah. Had a few line breaks. Here's the gun. Um, he is their go-to guy at the, at the minute too. Like. With no Munster, no Munster, Paps. No Paps. Uh, I mean, he holds his own, whatever, but nah. Munster's a massive out yeah, for them. So is Paps, man. Like. Yeah. But Paps, is, Paps hasn't even been there all pre-season. They were ready for this. Um, you could tell they were ready for this. Yeah. Not last week, week four. <laughs> last week was a great victory by the Dogs over Melbourne. Well, but, this uh, week, I think, victory of the round goes to the Knights. That, oh, for sure, for sure. That was against adversity for days. That was, a, that was a top That was a top effort from the boys, you know. It was a shit game, but it was a great win. Yeah. Oh, it's 12 men, man, for 20 minutes or something, wasn't it? Gutsy well, we effort. Had, Real gutsy yeah, effort. We had a 10 minutes in bin and Saifidi got sent off. I'm not quite sure how long to go, but Ponga got knocked out early. Braley got knocked out not long after. Frizz went down with an ankle injury. Yeah. Carnage. Very much big time. Yeah, straight up. That and we still horrible. won. So well, it has been. Tigers, disappointing, man. Just, just like, like shit. Let's just, let's just all sit here and say very. Like, I'm very sorry to Tiger supporters. I'm I can't not. imagine what you're going through, but it's hard. It's hard to watch, man. Bergs is loving it. Let's just. Fuck that. Like, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, but. You picked your team, and, and that's, like, granted. Oh, yeah, that, you some can still have we, empathy, bro. You've been we, there at the bottom. You I know have. how it feels. I have, but so put we came yourselves in, in their shoes. They've been there for fucking how long yeah, now? And we came in in the off-season, and everyone's spruiking this. Oh, so we can't all that, have a Gus and, Gould, all right? And, and let's face it, it wasn't ready to be spruiked yet. Mate, they've got a Justin Pascoe running the shit there, and we've all seen his haircut. 
It's uh, it's not much to fucking go off, and the rest of him follows suit, I think, so... Is it like your hair guy? No way. Good one. Anyway, um... Okay, we're still Yeah, but talking. no. You, like, if, we, if everyone had a Gus, if Gus were in the NRL, probably, everyone would be in a much better shape. I get what you're saying. Because he'd make everyone start producing their own juniors. He'd give you compensation for producing your own juniors. And it'd just have a flow-on effect for the comp, and it'd be great. We'd probably even, maybe even start to think about a draft system then. With, with, if they get the talent. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then, if Gus is going to fix uh, the NRL, then let me ask you a couple of things. He reckons he can do it in the lunch lunch break. Oh, yeah. I know, Gus said a lot of things. 360, I'm backing him. 360 boys are pissed at him at the moment because of the way he's talking about concussions and saying how the concussion protocols have ruined the game. Now, I think, whoa, let me just put it on whoa, where... Whoa, like candy and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are having a go at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let, let me just... I, I, I don't think... I don't think that's the case. I think what they're doing is they're taking his stuff out of context because often when he's talking about that, he's talking about the misuse by clubs, bringing on interchanges and stuff like that. No. He's just talking about the end. Yeah, he, he thinks, yeah, the HIA is bullshit. All this concussion shit's bullshit. Take him it's on. all hysteria, he reckons, that the stats come out to prove it, but then the evidence has since come out to disprove the evidence that they're still running off. He reckons all the evidence that they got early that they're still making the rules up by has since been disproven and is now longer no longer irrelevant or relevant. So in his words, well, not his words, but from what I read from that is he thinks it's all bullshit. The concussion hysteria is bullshit and let the cunts play. Sorry. They, I mean, look, they're worried about... Um... They worry about lawsuits, bro. Yeah, that's I'm the saying. Thing. They worry about those lawsuits. That's another thing he said. Bring on any kind of lawsuit, and he thinks any judge in Australia will throw it out. He doesn't think anyone has a leg to stand on when it comes to suing the game for concussion-related issues. Well, well, let's see what happens, because 50 former AFL players apparently have uh, all teamed up with 60 AFL players. But at players. the end of the day, what more can the NRL do? But no, it's about a question of things that they knew and then how long it took to implement and stuff like that. Look, man, it's the world we live in. What, and players didn't know that they might get hit in the head playing rugby league? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, also maybe the contracts were Mate, if, if you're that much of a... I might say Jaden Salmon. <laughs> and you're going to sue the game for a couple of head knocks that you suffered and good money and playing the sport that you love, which you probably would have played... Outside of the NRL, if you made it or not, yeah. on the weekends, doing your daily job, well, then you're a piece of shit, and you should never have played the game to begin with. Love it. Tell Go us how play you really soccer. Feel. Oh, bang. Even then, they're trying to stop the headers and shit. Like, come on, man. Like, fuck me, drunk. How crazy is the world going these days? Sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, on to the next question. This is a new segment. It's called Let's See How Angry We Can Get Gregory. He loves it. Um, okay, so what do you think of Blake Ferguson uh, wanting the NRL to pay for his nose job now that he's finished with the Japanese rugby and all that sort of stuff? This is it. Okay, this is, this is it. I can see you going, if you've played your NRL and you haven't gone anywhere else except for maybe back to grassroots rugby league, I can see them making a the case for that. Right? But if you fuck off to Union for super, super dollars... Soldier, soldier, Japanese like rugby. Right super here. dollars. Like, let's face it, you didn't go That's over there it. for a $200,000 no. pay rise. You went over there for the big bucks. Pay for your own shit, mate. Go play, put another season in Japanese rugby for your surgery. No, bro, so. he never even got a season. Remember, he oh, got busted right. on, on the bag. Right. So but you, at the end of the day... You're a fucker. How long did he play the NRL with that busted nose? Yeah, yeah, yeah Why exactly. didn't he get it fixed while he was playing? Well, well, he was covered under all the NRL's insurances and all that kind of shit. Why didn't he get it fixed then? Well, Why is he waiting for now to go, Ooh, I need my nose fixed? To know. have to jump on to... It's not going to look any prettier, mate. Don't worry about You're it. You're not going to get any more shit up there. That's <laughs> 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 probably how he got pins. Just fell out on the floor. So what the fuck are you? Got stuck in the bend. <laughs> Couldn't get it up. Didn't have the capacity. Like... <laughs> It just fell on the floor. And see, he knows what pain is. Oh. 
to, right. to knock one down. He's got to literally get it back to straight. That's going to hurt. He got bendy straw. He got <laughs> one out as a kid. Crazy straw. Yeah, uh, Lance George has commented his nose worked fine to get on the bags. Sure <laughs> did. Oh, I bet you there's the clearest passage in the world. <laughs> I can still breathe through one nostril. Right. Nah, should be right. Play well, on. The size of those nostrils, he should be breathing through them all right. Right, that's, sorry, that's the easiest way to catch him out. Throw a bag on table. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him get that up. I'm telling you, yeah, so you get that up, you're right. you be right, lad. All righty. Um, oh, was there any more questions that are going to get Con riled up? I'm trying to think what's going down in the world no, rugby league in the last week. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, it's all right. Let's okay. move on. Let's talk a little bit of Supercoach. We've been going um, myself. Well, tra- trades, trades should be... In front of mine, It mate. should be the massivest thing on the list this week. Like, let's face it, everyone should be doing them. Um, unless you made the perfect team from the start, which is highly unlikely. Everyone should be doing trades this did, week. Fuck, good luck. Well done. Well done. But yeah. for me, there's at least... There's at least five, six people I'd love to be able to get my hands on this week. Not going to happen. Um, with the help, with the help of you guys, I'd like to work out what's what's the best way about to miss out on a couple of these guys. You know, um, how are we going to miss? Who are we going to miss out on? Pick up next week. Granted, we won't pick them up cheap, but who who's the one that you'd wait on? Like I've got some. Um, High and low break evens here, so we'll touch into that. You want to touch into that now? Uh, just because trades, I think everyone has to do them, so trades should be pretty much talked about. And these are the blokes you should be trading in. Um, hop good. If you don't have hop good, you, you're not super coaching right. If you don't um, have hop good, you go play another game. Well, no, not really. It's still not your fault. Like what? It, it's still not your fault. Everyone told you week one jump on, but a lot of people do like to have a look. And he's gone back to back. Massive scores. He's got a break even of minus 139. Scored 124 on the weekend. He's near a VC option or C option every week, the way he's going. Um, I can't remember anyone coming out in their first season back back tons, especially a forward. Yeah, and it's it's outrageous the work it's rate. It's crazy. I mean, you put it this way, round one, he's... The points from his base was 81. Yeah. Round two, 64 base. And yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, so he's set to make stupid amount of money this week just for taking the field. So um, I suggest if you don't have him first pick up of the week, doesn't matter who you get out. Um, we'll touch on that a bit later, but... Well, he could get sent for 10, seven times in the game and still make a buttload of cash. Yeah. Yeah, he can literally, eh? Hey, you can, yeah. So, yeah, and then the next one on the list, I got Fidzy. Now, I didn't jump on Fidzy. Hammer side, Tabby Wife, though. Yeah, the hammer, for those that are in the know. Um, I didn't jump on Fidzy. I sort of have a little bit of regret, but I'm also sort of thinking maybe he's the one that I could let get away. Um, but I still haven't decided. He, he's got a break even of minus 60, so it's not as juicy as hot good, but. Come out for Nobody's seventy. Nobody's going to be as juicy as hot food. Seventy nine yeah, last week, and I think he got a sixty, uh, seventy eight the week before. Maybe um, I'm on the hammer. Sign me up. He's going to make a buttload of cash, isn't he? Like his work rate increased dramatically. Yeah. From the previous two, three seasons. examples that we've had. New team, so, new coach, boys. Just, you know, I'm, I'm. He's won so far that. The benefactor. I'm spewing I didn't jump on at the yeah. start. I didn't listen to myself. Or even after week one. Well, yeah, yeah, I jumped on garbage after that. But anyway, um, next on this is, is Trindle. Now, a lot of people talking Trindle. Uh, Trindle scares me a little bit just because who knows when Nico's coming back. Um, but, but he's going back back 70s. No, nah, he got a 40-something or 50-something the week before, didn't he? Can you check that out for us, Louis? Pretty sure he's going back back um, 70s. Trindle, but he's got minus 54 break even, scored a 76 on the weekend. And what's his average? Now, apparently oh, yeah. Nico said uh, that he'll be back next week. Well, the week after. Yeah. Is that what he said? Because yeah. everyone's jumping on the fact that he said he, he'll probably be good to go next round. Apparently he's done an interview last couple of days. Didn't he say before the season that he probably only miss a week? Yeah. But that's my first thinking. They've been saying a week, a week, a week the entire time. 
He also said, like I said, in the pre-season, I probably missed round one. That's about it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's three weeks now. And, yeah, Trindle, 46 against South in the first game. And then, yeah, 76 against mm. Para last game. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it's not as juicy, but still set to make decent money if they go on a little bit of a run and, and Hines well, don't come back. I'm only selling Nath, getting Trindle. Until Hines does return, and either way, Nath leak cash, and Trindle's going to make cash. So I'm going to be in a better position after I get Hines. So. Yeah. Well, Trindle has a projected score of 37, and with that, he's going to make 80k this round. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Another 70 odd, and he's making 110. Yeah, right. And the next one on the list is Preston. Now, I'm not sure on job security at Preston, but. Supposedly the coach likes him. I reckon. I, I, I think he's safe. Yeah. Bro, he's a weapon. You saw what he did, and that was against the Storm. He played 76 minutes on the weekend. Yeah. All the other forwards except for Kickout played less than him. Kickout played 77. I don't think anyone else played over 60. And that would be the one thing where you said so, when you looked at the guy is, oh, he, he looks a little bit small in those other places, but the thing, he looks fit as fuck, doesn't he? That's he does. Like, I don't see where... He got any additional minutes from anyone getting hurt or anything, so I think he's, yeah, he's a teacher's pet. See, I was scouring hard yesterday, day before, trying to figure out, hold on, was there, was there an injury? How, why did he play this 76 minutes? Seems like an odd no, number. No, he just ended up starting him and then pretty much just didn't take him off because they didn't give him a reason to take him off. Yeah. Well, he's, he, yeah, he's got a minus 51. I think he's locked in. Minus 51. Uh, very lowly priced at 200. Yeah. So it's... It's the perfect downgrade if you've had a lot of dramas in your side and you need to fix it. So um, you've been saying that, like, Eli Katoa's break even, I think, only minus 28 or something. Yeah. So if he comes out and scores 30 more than him, you're going to go up the same price. I so. think, but Eli is 411,000, so. But that's what I mean, but they're still going to go up the same price. And yeah, if you yeah, want but, them both. But... You'd Pre- probably wait Preston's the week bargain and basement, Preston. bro. No, but Preston's bargain basement. But they're still going to go up the same price. That's I don't what I'm ba- saying. Katoa will average out earlier. That's the thing. If Preston goes on a run, he could put on 400k. But I'm saying Katoa's safer. Yeah. So you might want to get him in first and then wait for Preston next week and see if he does continue to play big minutes or not or if it was just an outlier. Anomaly. Yeah, that's it. Well, they're expecting TPJ to be back next week. From his calf. So, so I don't think TPJ affects Preston. He probably goes into the middle. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, then you got Cardi, the surprise packet of Cardi. I'm spewing him, go him over Dorio. Me too, man, because Cardi has chugged long. I'm blaming Juzzy. Back to back 58. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Now you know how I've felt for four fucking years. <laughs> yeah, you, you spewed us out with Cardi, kept reminding us of the party yeah. and this, that, and the other. Cheers, Jazzy. Yeah, well, thank you. Remember when those times you talked me into him for me to become this bitter? Yeah, you're yeah, welcome. Mate. Richard, I'm still dirty. You'll be out fucking Joey Marnie too, mate. Joey, so, so, is, so is Richard and Joey, <laughs> trust me. Uh, yeah, Cardi, minus 49. Great. Uh, scored a 58, back-to-back 58, so I think. I think he got a 58 the week before as well. Um, playing, playing the full 80 till Lane gets back. So... So who do you ask you? Who gets dropped first? Dory or Cardi? Uh, I say Dory for me. But, but Brad Arthur coming out for the season, remember, and said he wants to work Dory up into an 80-minute edger. That might be the case, but form form speaks wonders. Especially in, when you're in saying too. that, if, if Lane comes back, I'm not sure Cardi goes to the right, though, either. I think he's... Looks well, like I don't he's, think it matters what side Cardi plays on, to be honest with you. No. I don't think he's phase playing left or right. He does his job. Oh, he's chugging At the moment, right. all he's doing is fucking pretty much running good lines and making his tackles. Yeah, like, there's nothing flash to his game. He's just doing a good second row's job, man. Yeah, well... He's doing the hard yards. First game, he got, yeah, 59 points, base of 51. And then last week, 58 with a base of 46. Which, yeah, yeah not bad. And then next on list is Zarko. All right, Jermaine is awesome. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, that was a trap. I feel sorry so, for everyone that got on. That's but... it. He, he's a week one bandit. A lot of people 
Um, jumped on him last week. He was one of the most what score last week. I was, about, I was about to say if last I think if you go back to but this week scored a last forty-eight week. in last a week. week. Just gone. Got a forty-eight. Minus 46 average, though, at the moment. So, but then once that 100 disappears out of his rolling average and he has his massive price spike, his break-even is going to be pretty much his average. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I wouldn't jump on. I wouldn't even spear anyone in nope. here, Zarko. I've, I've only put him on the list because he's so highly owned. We're bound to have people that listen that If own. you jump on last week... Jump off. Milk the jump two, off. No, milk the two price rises out of him and then... Probably won't get two. You won't get two unless he goes off again this week. Well, he's got a minus 46, so he's just got to take the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he'll... What's he worth, Bart? What's his price? Three, three, uh, three, eight, three. I would not be bringing him in this week, put it that way. So we've got the almost 450. Who's next? And if he scores 60, his break even will be that. Egan. Wade Egan. Egan. Yeah, do you feel he could do the same? Actually, no, because he's been fairly consistent, hasn't he? Egan's I'm on Egan. Back to back tries in his game. Um, don't see him doing that. What's his base and power at, uh, Louis, when you get 50. there? But Egan, Egan for me, he's the one that I'm thinking do I overlook Egan, give Cheese another chance? Or um, he's the one for me I'm umming and ahhing about because that way I can get myself the hammer, um, a Preston, and a. Someone else that I'm looking at, I think. Maybe a, a sideways trade, I think the other one was. Yeah, Egan's base uh, against Newcastle with that 99 was 44, and then last week was 47. So his base isn't that great. He's relying on... Tap base and, and power. Well, yeah, relying on attack and stats. We did score yep. tries. No, well, he's, <laughs> he scored, I think, 199 points, isn't it? What was that, sorry? Sorry. He scored 199 total points. 88 and a 99. So he's 190. 190. And I think a lot of them... 187, sorry. Uh, so I think I worked out last night. He's got 101 in base and power, including negatives. And Reed Marnie's got 90 in base and power, including negatives. So his base and power, including his... Missed tackles, penalties conceded, errors. He's 50 a game. And what that swayed you? Is that swayed you more to Egan? Egan over over anyone else? Like, what do you think Egan potentially can match Grant or no? Stepping stone to the easiest way I'm going to get to Grant by week six and piss off ten of all out of my team. He's going to lose money. So if you're already a Grant owner, would you overlook Egan? To strengthen in other places. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's that's the sort of one. That's yeah. Egan's garments. only so attractive to me because I've got Reese Robson. Yeah, yeah. And I want Grant and Reese Robson to run through the season with. And I've just found Egan as my quickest way to get Harry by probably six or seven. Because with the trades I'm doing this week, I've got but almost one point one million sitting in the bank. So I just need to wait a couple of weeks for Egan to juice up, and psh, welcome in the wizard. The wizard. What about you guys? Are you looking at Egan? Oh, look! I'm thinking about him. I'm thinking. Who but... are you? Who? Who? What? What? What damage have you done? Like, whereabouts do you need to go, Louis, to sort of strengthen your team? Oh, center wing. Center wings, really. Um, I've had Val and Tuolagi were my two main ones. Um, I had him my center wings, and I wouldn't get rid of Val, but Tuolagi hasn't. Hasn't quite lived up my to my expectations, See, to be honest. The problem there is you went two players from the same team on the same edge. Yeah, yeah. So I'm personally I'm looking at maybe getting in Karaz instead of Tua Lagi. All right, let's talk about it. Karaz Boys, boys. next hey, on the list. Actually, beautiful. he's the top of 2021. His base is just cray cray. Yeah, and then you throw attacking stats on that. Proved he can score a try. Well, he got he's got a minus thirty six uh, break even and scored one hundred and forty eight on the weekend. Not sure he's, he was very average the week before. Uh, Fifty one the week before. Oh, not that average. And at that's all. pretty much that's base. Pretty... I think you had a line breaking that yeah. maybe. Oh, yeah, we got dominated. We Are got you sideways in Toto to him? I understand. Oh yeah, yeah, I would personally. I'd, if I'd... I had the luxury of doing that, 
Yeah, if 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 I had the free money though, and I'm being brutally honest with you, I'd get Garrick over him. Yeah, if you if you could, Garrick's um, uh, Garrick's not this way. For. Yeah, like don't no you know, I understand Garrick's. He's I understand he's Garrick's five hundred and seventy three thousand. You could go and Karaz next week to he's probably going to go six hundred and fifty odd. Yeah, plus you could literally go Karaz for Garrick's, a week and then Garrick next week before his price change if he it. brains it this weekend. Because you know Garrick's going to Garrick be solid. Has solid points, you know. Like, don't get wrong, Karaz solid points, but if I had the money there, I see Doesn't the ceiling. Doesn't kick. Yeah, well, that's Karaz. Garrick's. Yeah, yeah, that's Garrick's appeal to me. Like. Yeah. Um, Tommy just feeds him the ball like candy. It's just yeah, it's lovely partnership. <laughs> <laughs> if not, Tommy just scores him under the post. Go, he goes plop. Thank but you. Yeah, so I really like that, Louis. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's to a no-brainer. To be really honest, what's too long his price? Five seventy eight. No I brainer, think. bro. Straight so across. Ten k cheaper. And look, Bulldogs. The next draw, they've got Tigers and Warriors. You can guarantee, especially you can guarantee, especially next game against the Tigers, he's going to probably be crossing for at least one or two. Don't sides. you go throwing the G word around here, bro. Don't you dare throw that commentator's curse out. You got what? to understand, people listen to you, and just that shit happens. All right. But not even it's that. Horrid. Like he's. He's offloading like champion, mm. and he's taking fifteen plus runs a game. So you're gonna get forty to fifty points out of him without the attacking stats. And if he does that, he's still sitting an average of like seventy five next week. So cheering, like that'll still be another decent price rise out of him. And then it's literally probably straight across to Garrick. Well, his break yeah. tackle abilities, beastish. It's almost like a um, couple of tackles a game. Like it's it's decent, you know. He's he's busting tackles quite often. So he reminds me a little bit of like what Ramian does over there at Sharks. Like he just busts tackles over there, Ramian. Like I like what he does too. Huh? No, sorry. Oh, then we'll move down the next on the list now. He was this this one was surprise packet. He is not as highly owned as pretty much anyone else on the list, but he's still high enough owned for me to have a talk about Nichols. Now Nichols. Back to back decent scores off the bench. Used to do it at Souths as well. Um, score semi decent off the bench. I know he's got tries, but to go to minus thirty four average and he scored a fifty seven on the weekend. Um with a base of fifty five as well. Coming off the bench. You know, and he, when he comes on the people are tired. It's that yeah, he's, uh, he, yeah, well, 50, he's just a strike weapon. He's not that, he's, he just, yeah. Quite just a cheaper. Have a higher ceiling. And, and yeah. yeah. They're not just going to pump out 50s and then you plateau out in three or four weeks. Yeah. And then um, last one on this list is Katoa. Alisi Katoa, um, Alisi Katoa, minus 28, scored a 92 on the weekend, looks to be the go-to guy at the, at the Storm, especially... Oh, without Munster there. Especially while Munster's out. Yeah, so... Richard couldn't fucking hurt a fucking pack of sheep. Yes, I know. He did look average. Get people in line, bro. Do your job. Tell them where you need them to be and when you need them to be there. That's your job as a six. Don't just because you're a kid coming in, tell them. Yeah, you get a re- bit more respect for it. Too. Well, Loiro's only a kid too. Justin Nolan's not there, so you got nothing to worry about. Justin Nolan's back this week, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, I believe oh, so. Tell, I can buy Justin Nolan some coffees and then get him to tell him then. <laughs> yeah. So now on the other side of that coin, I only got a couple of these guys there, highly owned guys, but each of you blokes have, have mentioned. Moving on one or the other today, both. if not both, that's right. And you moved on one last week, which was a good move from you. So no, you didn't. He moved on one for the other one that's on the list. Um, so Nafe at 149. Um, Go on. Break even, massive break even. He's capable of hitting a break even, let's face that fact. Does have a buy this week, so you're not under the pump to actually sell Nafe this week. If you're you on know. Trindle, you are. Well, yeah, that is if you want Trindle and don't have to play uh, Boyd or something like that. Like, that's what I'm looking at. That's my drama. I'm playing Trindle. 
Oh, yeah, it's it. I'm going, I'm going Boyd to Trindle straight sideways, bro. Take the cash and run. Even yeah. if Nico's back next week, I'll, that's when I'll look at probably going Nath to Nico. Bang, straight. Well, I'm doing it the other way. I'm going just Nath to Trindle until Nico's back. Saving the cash and then going Trindle to Nico. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not touching either. I'm leaving him in my. Squ- I'm leaving both of them in my squad. I'm staying strong. Me oh, too. the experiment I'm, begins. Me, yes, I'm me leaving too. them in my squad. Me too, bro. Yeah. Not touching. Anybody. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to write they're down. They're guns for a reason. What trades we've done, what prices they're at, and then in six weeks we'll come back and reevaluate these trades and see who's in the better position. I think we should. Too. By all means, absolutely, uh, we have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Well. The next one's on this Teddy, 135 break even. It's gone. Got a 55 on the weekend. Hard done by Bart. If you actually watch that game, he could have easily got a 150. Yeah. Well, he just doesn't like him, Hear eh? me out. Hear me out. I'm giving Teddy one more shot. Because I think, well, I'm hoping Teddy goes in there and pretty much sat, the, going down, sat him down and just going, you look like I'm the fucking captain. I was there to no. support. Like, you passed that fucking ball, bro. Like, we we get points. You know what I mean? Because that's what it could come down to to get into the top eight. If you're not winning every game, you know what I'm saying? Like Teddy's not doing that, bro. Well, I don't know what, what happens behind closed doors. Look, but at the end of the I day. I hope something like that's happening because I, against South, I'm going to hold on. The rivalry is real, bro. I don't think, I don't think anyone has to say anything to Joseph Suali if he just looked in a paper or fucking opened the social media. It would have just... Had something about him not passing the ball to Teddy, so he knows he did the wrong thing. He knows. In saying that, he thought he was going to make it around there. He he backed himself. Sometimes, if he would have got there, I reckon seventy five percent of the time, the fullback goes for the intercept or the knockdown. He doesn't even take the ball. One of the attacking players. Yeah, he just dives in between them and tries to stop it. Put your body on the line. No, I get a concussion. Yeah, see, um, now I'm getting right up Birdo. Birdo, if you didn't sell last week after his poor performance, now the dog's done really well against Melbourne. Um, Birdo got a uh, 30. And that's pretty much from the goal kicking, bro. So, like, don't you wrong, we didn't put, we didn't put 50 on Melbourne. Well, let's, 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 let's put let's 28 on him. We scored a couple of tries against Melbourne, but... Scored 28, so that's five tries. You'd expect Burton to score... At least have any one. A touch better than 30, anyway. But he's got a break even of 123. Get out now. Um, Where do you go? Oh, Dewey, if you have Dewey's injured Dewey. or possibly injured. KP's knocked the fuck out. Cody Walker's doing peanuts. If you don't... Ezra have... Mam is your boy, I think. Yeah. Can't really look at Kiri. Oh, Dylan, look Dylan at Brown Lillard. bounced back last week. Still yeah, bags. He yeah, um, see, he's the, the test against Manly. I mean, look, man, Schuster, first time this week. Or you can move Katoa down if you got him at halfback and possibly bring in halfback. Yeah, and that might be the, that might be the smart play at this point. I like Ezra, but I think Ezra is... Well, he's definitely found his feet in the team, yeah. you know what I mean? As like, long as A-Ray stays there, I think he can do good things. Yeah, they did look good. They do look good, eh? They've looked good to start the year off Brisbane. Reese Walsh, sexy. So, okay, bang. I don't know if he's on that list yet, but nah. yeah, Reese Reese Walsh, do you wait a week? But well, I, I played I played people last week that played him and they beat me. Um yeah, there's oh, people that I had him, him I had him all pre season until he put on too much mascara that one day and had to miss round one. I ended up getting Teddy and it tore me team apart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had Tohu before yeah, that happened. I think I'm hating someone at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's yourself, Con. Yeah, I think so. It's always <laughs> yourself. Uh, next on this, Cobo, 123. Don't think he's highly owned by anyone that we talk about because we haven't really talked about Cobo up, but he is highly owned. Uh, 123, scored 22 on the weekend. Didn't look good at fullback when he played fullback against Penrith, and they, they won that game. Um, don't get me wrong, it was a bludgeon, like, in the rain. It was not... 13-12. Uh, it, it wasn't an attacking and It wasn't a winner's dry game, dream, you know what I mean? Still, if you get full back, just on your base, bring back... I think back Herbie s- scored 90. Yeah, Her- Herbie's... 
I think he got a double digit. Yeah, he, that's it. He got the double. Big go-to guy out there at the moment. He's a fucking weapon, eh? But also in the rain, you fin. don't go all the way out to the winger, do you? Fins up. Go to fins. Um, next on this, Troll. Now, Troll's got a 121. Easily capable for Troll to get a 121. Um, it's but, Roosters with Jared and Radley hunting him. Oh, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking, like, up against the Roosters this week. Joey's going to want some. Is it going to be a points fest? Oh, uh, look. Yep. He'll be, they'll be, you reckon? I reckon he'll be over 50 points scored. Over 50? Yep. Okay. As long as it's dry. Yeah, I believe it's supposed to be I hot and dry. I think it's meant to be fucking hot as shit, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What are they? What the are whole they weekend playing? in Sydney. I think 39 Sunday. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I heard 36 earlier, but it keeps changing. Like, it, it's getting... Oh. And mind It'll you, probably look, be raining in 27 on Sunday. They don't know. Let's ring up Tim Bailey. Tim, you listening? Now, next on the list, Val. Val Holmes. Um, I'm going to say you, you brought him in. You know what he's capable of. I don't think he's... I'm so holding. Old. Yep. <laughs> Unless you're going to Garrick, maybe, but... i got Garrick, too. <laughs> That's the only way I'd go with Val. He's got a 98 break-even... You wouldn't downgrade him to a Karaz or a Hammer or something, bank to cash and then upgrade some other position where you may be vulnerable? Nah, I'd, I'd rather not just because I don't want to miss him. They've got a good good opening 10 rounds. I think if you really look into the Cowboys. How's that it's worked not, out for him in the first two? Not good, but we, you know what? We all expect that. We expect it every year. We buy our players... No, I no, didn't. I brought Gary Ken Holmes expecting hundreds out of him for the first week. Gary got me there. Yeah. Val, not so much. Got a seven. Not even week to her. 65. 40 odd second week. Now, Cheese is the next one, heavily owned. Oh, he's going to gloss over that. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I just thought Val. Oh, Val. No, oh, Val. <laughs> if, he's adri- if he's averaging 55, man, then. Straight up, he's looking to go down to somewhere around the 550, 600 mark, isn't he? And Karaz is going. Yeah, way up. Like, he, he pretty much takes the field. He's going to score, Um, he's going to get like 100k. Or a hammer. No, nah, actually, I'm, could to be, be a honest, two week swapsies. I think I looked in the app, and the app says he's projected to make 117k, Karaz, but that's based off of 97. So if he doesn't come out and score some tries against the Tigers this week, then he's in trouble. That's it. Projected scores and their projected cash rises or losses are. What's the, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but they they can fluctuate. They're obviously not going to be spot on with their projected scores. Every well, that's week. it. So yeah, I'm, I'm I don't know. I looked at it and I was like 97. Whereas like Trindle, you know, going up by 100k or whatever, that happens if he take it gets like a 36. So, and he's pulled out a couple of decent scores. So yeah. it's like, all right, yeah, cool. I'm more willing to take that gamble because I'm just looking to grab cash. Just a few quick cash grabs, bang. And then not only that, if Karaz pulls out a 35 this week. He's still got a decent average in him. His break even still going to be semi-low. Yeah, exactly. But once that 148 leaves, he's going to leak cash unless he pumps out another semi-decent score. Yeah. Which the dogs are capable of over the next couple of weeks. But let's just see what happens. Like, they are looking good. So I'm uh, very interested. All right, next one's a cheese. Uh, sell, 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 sell. Yeah. Straight up. Got to get rid of him. Got to get rid of him this week. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Got a 90 break oh, even. Oh, would if I had him? You reckon he's not playing and Turpin's going to play? Don't know. I don't care if he's playing or not. Got a 90. Not even gone. Scored a 10. <laughs> you got uh, a 10? Yeah, you got a 10. Uh, how? Um, he played like seven be 10, seconds. Get 10, 10 points for a head knock. You should get some. It wasn't a head knock. He got pumped oh, in the fucking right, ribs. ribs. That's right, yeah. Well, he didn't even get pumped. He tried to make a tackle. Yeah, so sell the cheese. Go to a, go to an Egan. It's probably the best bet, yeah. Egan. Egan. Well, Marsh King didn't back up his week one. He suspended this week. And he got sent off. Yeah. Sorry, just quickly, just, I just, Kate Burgess just made a comment about Val. Um... Is it be careful with Val as he was definitely impacted by losing Drinky and having Hiku play at fullback? Yeah, well, Drinky last year unlocked Val a bit, if we remember right. Mm. Who's named fullback this week? <coughs> the young fella. Yeah, random. Young fella, man. Cheapy, bro. Good dude. Supposedly get, plays good footy. Um, don't really they really mustn't rate Val as a fullback, eh? 
<laughs> I just think they've got no, they've got no centers either. They've got no outside back. Not even Hiku. But also how old? the fullback before. How old's Val? Yeah. How old's Val? 28, 20. Not even. 25, 26. No, he's got to be older than that, bro. He, he had an NRL career, career, career and an know. NFL career. He had a grid on for like six months, man. Yeah, and anyway, it Val. wasn't that long. Tw- 27 max, I reckon. He was young. He was, he's young. He, came he was great a kid. Young. He was yeah. a pup, bro. Won a grand final young. Bloody um, and the next one, list KP. 27. 27, hey. yeah. Okay, so I'm just thinking maybe he doesn't have the miles in the legs or they're conserving for him for the goal kicking for some reason. It's the only reason why I can think you don't put him back to fullback. No, I just don't think. He's not a fullback, man. He yeah. was the world's best winger before he left, and that's where he should have stayed. He's done He's done a great job of centre. I don't get me wrong. But I still think he could be the best winger in the game. Yeah, he's good. And then KP's the last one on the list. Sorry to anyone who brought him in. Yeah. Um, sorry to anyone who owned him too. Like, let's face it, you didn't bring KP in thinking he was going to get a head knock. It's sort of the same thing with Tommy, mate. Like, it's not a matter of it's if, it's more a matter of when. Like, as soon as Paps comes back, I'm buying him too, don't you? Know? <laughs> <laughs> Glad for punishment, eh? <laughs> But no, seriously though, it's just like it is a good gamble. Like if you had him first week, good for you. Last week, I, I played people that captain him. Don't get wrong, some still beat me, but um, yeah, like. Well, I believe I mock people. I don't know if it was in the podcast or not, but everyone didn't get on him all preseason because I worried about his HIA concerns. Rah rah rah. Then he scores seventy two week one, goes off with a HIA, and everyone jumps on board. So don't be shocked by him getting knocked out this week. More for you, I think. Well, yeah, he, he, we knew he got knocked, exactly like you said, got knocked out last week. Um, don't get me wrong, he said that there was nothing in that one last week, and OB said the same thing. But you could see, after he went in for the tackle, he was rolling around holding his head. And then he got up like nothing happened, but yeah, as you would. Yeah, well, you're going Especially in his fucking yeah. case. Yeah. But, yeah, so... Well, uh, 21.2% of teams had him last week. Yeah. So 21%. Highly, that's highly owned, considering. So I'd sell this week, but... I've got to have a shit I've got to do. Unfortunately. Well, the good news is you can't lose, you know, Cash. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm keeping him and Nels this week, and they're going next week. Yeah. And you get another look at a couple other guys, like the, the Manly guys. I'll miss and... out on Preston's price rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's sometimes the price you've got to pay. Now, just talking on that, right? Who are the ones you can sort of let go for this week? Is Preston the one you let go because he's only going to go up to 280k? or is? Well, I think there's about eight or nine that you could toss up between them and either get him this week or next week if you want to seriously get him. Or otherwise, after that, I think you're going to be but is there an order? premiums. Is there sort of an order you're going to go like? Is the Fidzi the most important guy, or is Preston the most important guy, or is Egan at Hooker the most important guy? I know it's going to come well, down to make up a team. Oh, Fidzi's very important for me, Yeah, because I want to get rid of Teddy. Yep. And he's going to make me the most cash without Teddy. Um, Trindle, very important for me, because I want to get Nate, again, to maximise my cash value. Yep. And then the third one is the tough one for me, because you got Preston, you got Katoa from the Storm, you got Egan. They're the, they're the main three that I'm to and fro in between. Yeah. At the moment, I land on Egan, just because he's that stepping stone to Harry. Yeah. Who I know I can lock him for season's end, and I can. I've got Ryan Sutton and Nelson in my forward too. I can. Upgrade with the one point one million dollars almost I've got sitting there. Yeah. So one can go to Tohu and I can bulk up my back row as well with that cash. So to- that's, that's why I'm leaning towards them, and I can get Preston next week. Tohu's been massive, but his break even still only twenty four, so he's not going to go through the roof this week. So he's not even in my target range this week. I know he's going to score. Great points, on, yeah. but he's not going to make me that $90,000 that the Prestons and those other people are going to make me. So I, Tohu can wait a week for me. So definitely try to grab 
in your positions, like in you, everyone's team makeup's <clears throat> going to be different. So if you're looking at doing that, you look for who's got the most biggest minus break even with a decent run and jump on, eh? That's the spirit. Yeah. <laughs> you love a good minus. <laughs> Why not? Um, zoom right in on that. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, um, boost. Teddy has said to me today, trade and boost, man. Make as much coin as you can over the next couple of weeks. Is Ted back in the boost mad? Uh, is he nah. boost mad again or is this, is I, this I the time? I boost this week. Um, <clears throat> like you said, unless you've absolutely nailed 100% of everything. It's boost week. Boost the shit out of it, man. Boosting into round three. Oh, oh yeah, I, th- I think you have to. You know, this, these early weeks, you've got to really earn as much cash as you can. Use that boost to get that cash. Yeah. Jazzy boosting in around three, bro. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy not to, isn't it? I'm spewing I didn't do it last year. Like, changes the, it changes your season, mate. You know what I mean? Like, if I can't stress it enough to people, this is the week to boost. Like, boost, if not boost again next week if you want. Oh, I'm not telling you not to boost again. Like, boost. boost. As long as you haven't boosted week one. Let's not go boost happy. Well, I think Teddy He's up boosted, there, Turbo. I think Teddy boosted week one. I know. I think Paul, Teddy Beast week two and week three and maybe even week four. Paul, you and then know, maybe save one for the first buy round. Paul, you sends me a few messages through the week. He um boosted round Paulie. one. Yes, Paulie loves that haircut. Trust me, I'm gonna send him a picture. But yeah, he's he boosted round one. I know that for sure. He's come forty fifth at the moment, but he's got work to do as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, forty fifth. Yeah, forty fifth overall. Is he? Yeah, jumped up from ninety something the week before. He come ninety wow. something the first week, and then he's coming forty fifth at the moment. What team's he rocking? I'll show you. What um, score did he get last week? That's I don't know. You just have to keep keep talking. So I'll go find. Yeah. The, I'll go find the literature. Jazzy, what else you got on your? No, um, bro, I'm just in the same conundrum as you. I just don't have enough trades to make it through this week. I'm yeah, that's frustrated. it. And who do you miss out on and who do you get? Yeah, well, that's it. I've done another sort of set of trades and I've once again missed out on... Well, I've missed out on pretty much everyone here. What do you mean oh. you missed out on pretty much everyone here? Well, I've gotten rid of... I've kept Hannah Boyd. Hold on. Oh, I've got Ford. I've got no idea what I've done. I've traded Trindle for Brandon Smith. And then I've got... Oh, I've brought in Karaz. Uh, yeah, so that's where my money's gone. Uh-huh. I still can't figure out the third trade I made. I don't know. Come back to me. Why don't you go to up top and go to undo changes? And I'll tell you what trade you've made. Oh, okay, I have. I've only what made two. What are you two. doing this I've only made two, so I've got the third one there. It's weird how the boost does that. I'm, I'm in an R. I'm, I think I'm set on going from Tuolagi to Karaz. Yep. I think I'm set on that. Um, at this stage, this is probably going to change, but at this stage I've got um, Jaden Sullivan going to uh, Isaiah Katoa. Yep. Um, and then I've got Talao going to the Hammer. At this stage, no oh. interest in the Preston or Egan or. I was thinking about a Preston. I was honestly, I was tossing up between. At at this stage, it's between getting in Katoa or getting in Preston, um, for Dory. What are you just going off break evens, or what are you going off at this stage? Just job security, just or? getting cash. I'm just doing it for a cash grab. The Preston uh, break even is a lot lower, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, mind you, this was a thing I put together in 10 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, boys. I'm sitting over here going a little bit mental because I'm looking at my side and it's starting to get real dogs heavy. I'm thinking about bringing in Reed Marnie. Like that's one of the trades I could do. I've got Karaz, I've got Alamotti, I've got Perum. So I've got a lot of their backs. I'm thinking about bringing in um, Preston for the cash grab. TPJ might end up in my side. So I was like, oh, I feel like I'm getting real dogs heavy here. Uh, so I was just looking at their buys. But they've got 13, 17, and 23. 
I got a pretty sweet run with buys. Like, because those major buy rounds, you're you're getting the lowest, um, or your best 13s anyway. So they're the best rounds to have buys in, ultimately. Like, the teams that have buys in there, you've sort of got an advantage with the ones that... Just turn it off again. What did you say? <laughs> so they don't have buy to round 13. Nah, they got 13, 17, and then round 23, a little rest before they finish. That is pretty sweet buy draw. And, and they've got a pretty sweet draw in that back end, too. They play the Panthers in 21, but, yeah, they got, they got a decent draw in the back end. So, but what are the real bulldogs? A week one, the real bulldogs, or a week two, the real bulldogs? I think week two are the real bulldogs. I, I think that's what the coach wants. Well, they beat a depleted storm, but it's still, it's still beating the storm, man. Storm has structures and stuff in place. Like, still depleted. Yeah, it is. It's very heavily depleted. Like a lot of their first graders aren't there. But man, a win's a win. A win like in Melbourne. A win in Melbourne for the dogs is a win. That's it. Um, Berks was telling me there was no way they were going to win. They haven't won down there in years. They bring it to them, but they never win. I wasn't expecting them to win. I no, was one was. I was expecting the scoreline maybe the other way around and maybe even a little bit more. Yeah. But no Munster, no Papenhausen. Their forward packs just getting to know each other again. Yeah, it was it. Two is it... still out. And yeah. but in saying that, we're a work in progress too. And... Oh, he's done well. I only watched, I think, the first 35, 40 minutes, so I didn't even see the Storm score a point. But yeah, highly impressive. Yeah, we Especially look, compared to we week looked, one fumbles. We look good for a good 60 minutes, I reckon. You know, like 60 minutes of that game, we looked really good, and then the other 20, we, we just sort of clocked off, and Melbourne done their stuff to us. and. They that, played for the 80. They played... Well, they did. Even That, that was the difference. The depleted... Actually, whether they're winning or losing, they still play for the 80. The depleted team still played for the 80, yeah. whereas we played for 60. And then we probably chimed back in at the end there, you know what I mean? And But, yeah, it was a little too late for Melbourne. We got lucky, but... Yeah, cheering. Fuck Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> now, Perso, Perso and Braddo, um, I've seen them in a group chat. We were having... Um, now they're both good super coach minds, but they're at they're at differences on who to hold and who to sell as well. Like I can't remember who's for and who's what, but the hold and sell Teddy and Nafe thing. Um, for me, I, I, I'm going to hold them just on their pedigrees. I think you're doing the same, Louis. Yeah, yeah. Um, user selling on the money factor of it. Um, you don't see a, like in a perfect world where you've sold people before and it's gone wrong on you. Hundred percent. You don't but see, these are sort of players. That I'm, take, that I'm can more do selling that. Nave, not because of his break even or his scores that he's done, but what Penrith have shown me over the first two weeks. I think it's going to take a fair while for them to change their shit and got to adjust. To, yeah, exactly. For them to start being the force that they were, they can't just keep playing like they used to the last two years. Because Appy and Kicks aren't there, and now are two major role players in what they used to do. So, if they don't change it up, I can't see Nate busting out 150 on the regular for now. Yeah. Too much to do, you reckon, for him to get back to that? Not too much to do, it's just. Appy was a major part of what they did. Yeah. See, we were saying it all last year. The deception he provides, provides out a dummy half is valuable time for Nathan. Like, your hooker well, creates time for your half. So. That's it. Not not just Nathan, but he, he created time for his forwards. Yeah, for everyone. Which then created the fast play to ball, which then created time for Yo and Nathan. And like, It was just such a flow-on effect. I just don't understand why he can't do it at the Tigers. He's got the forward pack there. But anyway, that's a story for another day. But yeah. Oh. Sell knife. Right, I, I can understand holding Teddy. Roost is still a strong team. Jarrah's coming back this week. Bradley's coming back this week. Their forward pack's only getting stronger. Lodge won't be far away. Collins is getting better week by week after his ACL. So They've picked up um, Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown as well, yes, that's correct. So bit of mongrel in I there. I can understand holding Teddy because he could... Pump out that 150 any given week still. Bro, he yeah. would have gotten it last week had Swali passed yeah, twice. And he, dro- he dropped Not 150. Cold. Well, let's be honest. He wouldn't have got the line breaks. He wouldn't have got a tackle bus. So, all in all, he would have got an extra 34 points, which would have 
put him in 85. Yeah, so he's but, not turning up or anything. It also so. would have changed the momentum of the game. So, that, like, that, that's the thing you can't But they still scored. In. Sam Walker still scored on the one where he didn't pass at the teddy. He yeah, offloaded same, and Sam Walker play. scored instead. Mm. And on the second one... I don't think they did. I think some, they, think they scored maybe not that play, but a couple of plays after. Yeah. Fair but, call. All right. All right. Well, I've got a couple of questions. We'll just quickly pump through them. Pump through them. If you got something at the end there, we can go on it. Matty Drew, thoughts on Boyd to Trindle, lads? Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I think it's a good one. Um, pull the trigger on that, Matty. All right, let me ask a question then, because I've got this conundrum, and I'm sure other people out there do too. If I've got Boyd or I've got ben- Brandon Smith, do I keep Boyd that extra week and throw him up the top? Do I take the gamble on Smith, leave him up the top, even without the R on him, and get rid of Boyd to do it? Um. Didn't check Boyd's break even, but... 52. Old mate made the list, so he's as big as... Boyd, uh, Boyd, <laughs> he's his 90, though. But, like, he yeah, can Boyd, get 90. That's it. Boyd's 52, which... He hasn't proven he can get. Unless he flukes an attack and he's at somewhere, he's not getting anywhere near that. Brandon yeah. Smith's been Jeez. out of the game both times. And we Radley, back, good pass play to boys. Jared back through the middle. They could get that momentum that he needs to sneak over for a double. So yeah. 90 is achievable for Cheese. I'm not saying he's going to come anywhere near it. I think he's going to go sub 50, but... Yeah. Do you think? It's that? possible. Yes. All right. So what was the consensus there? Boyd or Cheese? So Get rid Boyd. of Boyd. Yeah, sweet. George Nagapaku. Did I do it right? I, I, I doubt it. Think until loud to Cardi and Cheese to Marnie. Not sure when Lane's back, though. Yeah. Um... What do you reckon? He must have Preston. Um, must. To be going the Cardi. Yeah. Um, I would say Cardi's a cash grab. He's the only one there, I think, at two... That's 69 or whatever 234, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, 234. Same price story. But, again, Preston's 34,000 cheaper than him, set to make that's more money. That's what I mean. He, he must have Preston um, or he wouldn't be asking. Cheese to money, but... You, you reckon Marnie's... I'm an Egan man. Yeah. Any of you on a look deep into Marnie? You said his attacking stats, uh, base stats haven't been too bad. No, nah, well, I think Egan's about 50 and a half, including negatives and minuses. And Marnie's about 45. Yeah. So yeah, Egan's, five, Egan's been points. getting better base than Marnie, so... Yeah. And he's playing less minutes, Egan. So that's something too, so... That could fluctuate. With Marnie or with Egan? No, I think Marnie's locked in for 80. Yeah. But Egan could play 50 one week, if, depending on how the Warriors are going or he's going, or he could play 80 maybe one week, depending on HIAs and whatnot. So he's an up and down. So the safe money's on Marnie? Nope. Egan. Egan, Egan. sorry. Because he can only go up, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Dan Nickel, to bring in Karaz, which leaves 200k in the bank, or just go straight to Gary. Now, we saw we touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, could... I, I'd go. say go straight to Gary, personally. I'd <laughs> say, because Gary has the goal kicking, which means oh. if Turbo's converting, then Garrick's also converting. If your team's going all right, and, you know, we've got a shitload of trades, could you go Karaz this week? Before Garrick's price rise, and then you split Karaz to Garrick next week. Yeah, we did touch on that too. So, I mean, that's it. If if Karaz goes gangbusters this week, then you literally straight out Garrick. Well, you don't. You just hold Karaz for another week and get another juicy price rise out of him. Yeah, you could do that too. I mean, you know, look, I've, has a I've heard game. other people call him the season-long keeper. Well, like, like his base, his base says, going off his work rate, right, mate. Right. Yeah, he's offloaded, and his work rate right last year too. When he was on the field, he did the same. He finished weak, but I'm pretty sure the dogs finished fairly weak. Well, too, even you know? just throw stupid offloads, but even a stupid offloads two points. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes somebody grabs it and takes advantage of it and runs a couple of meters and it turns into four points. Oh shit! He threw that out. So that's where Jamie Main Hopgood's getting. All his, I mean, like he makes his tackles yeah, and yeah, he, he does yeah, the he work of a lot. Of offloads too, but absolutely. it's those offloads because a lot of them are effective. That's Corey Parker. Back in his day, there was no ineffective or effective offloads. It was just four points. 
So he'd have eight offloads and like six goals a game at four points a pop. Yeah, cheering. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's making 40 tackles, 20 runs, and fucking shit like that. And there was no one-point hit-ups made in either. It was all two-pointers. Yeah, so that's it. But he was pulling so that's out. that's what I mean. Jermaine Hopgood's doing this shit on his new game. scoring system, yeah. man. Like, and on his debut, pretty much. Like, as, as a first-grade starter, man. it's insane. Not even Peptide Gal did that. Yeah. And he did that Peptide. <laughs> and he was fuck. He was a... Good fucking super coach play too. Heavyweight captain then. He didn't kick goals <laughs> either, but he still kept pace with Corey Parker and Cam Smith, mate. Don't yeah. you worry about that. He had the machine. He fucking machine. So well, like I ca- said, we pushed out the halfback on the fifth tackle just to take a hit up, so it's better for the team, man. <laughs> We're thirty minutes out from our own line. Nah, it's good, bro. It's, good. it's all good. I'll get you another ten <laughs> yeah. throw and offload. Yeah. Cheering, thanks, girl. Two points, two coach. Captain myself this week. <laughs> Clayton Gable is Burton a sell. Well, could he yep. become a potential pod player for those who didn't? See, look, I started with him as a, as the pod play, and it has failed me. And I feel like now is the time to jump off. And he's like any other gun; he can do whatever he wants, and he can hit that ceiling, and they can go mad. But hopefully, you'll pick him up a couple of hundred k cheaper before he does. He still is kind of a pod, well, just he... in the wrong kind of way. He's a bad point of difference. Let me just go into the rest of the question. For those who don't develop trade rage over his poor start to the season, he has a good matchup against the Tigers this week, and given that the Bulldogs look like they are starting to gel on the field against the Storm, if he can score 60 or more, then surely whatever price drop doesn't justify the trade. That is a very, very good point. I pulled the trigger last week. Um, is it, but? But if they put from, 28 on Storm, and he's still only scored 30, like we discussed earlier. This is if true. If they put 30 on the Tigers, we'll say he's going to score more. Uh, Touche, sir. If it all goes down the right, then it all goes through. What did Flano score? He didn't go gangbusters, did he? He, goes, he still gets shit too. Don't worry about that. Kraz scored all the super coach points for him. Impressed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a couple of good scorers in there. but Marnie. Marnie. Um... Was hey. Marnie getting the ball out to them? Flanagan scored a fifty-five. Yeah, probably season on. Anyway, well, we only had two games. <laughs> oh, I mean, for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So yeah, does it justify burning the trade? You should have done it last week. You're saying I'd burn. I'd I'd sell him. You burn it. You burn yeah, it. Get rid of him. Well, for because from memory, he's got a couple of tough games after that. Like, but, and he he his. Hard stints in are that, better than his good stints. Like we also discussed earlier, who do you go to? Yeah, like know. there's no five eights apart from Ezra and Dylan Brown after the last week. They're jumping up saying, "Pick me, pick me." So, do you go crazy and then just go straight to Schuster, especially if he's your second five eight? Oh, I just... if you keep him Dewey, do you take the punt on Schuster early, combine him with Tommy? I have a look. I'm still having a look at Schuster. Yeah, I, I want to have a look at Schuster first. But I mean, you're making a trade in your five eighth spot. Otherwise, you're bringing him into your second row, which wouldn't be a drama for Dewey, a Dury or whatever. I would swap Dury for him. Depending on your team makeup, we don't yeah. know what all mates' team makeups like. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. for I me, I don't want to get touch, rid of any of my second row. His first week back from a calf injury, we was only miss went to miss one week. Yeah. Um, all right, next one, Andrew Somerville. Hammer with the spare cash. Hammer with the spare cash for Hines in the bank or go Karaz. I'll let one of you touch on it because I've got an answer here. Well, know. we've pretty much said it. Get on Karaz for one to two weeks and then yeah. offload to see where the hammer's at. You know what I mean? Like I didn't say that. I only said that compared to Garrick. I own Garrick. And I'm bringing in the hammer this week over Karaz. Why? Yeah, keep going. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I just got a gut feeling that Ooh. it's a better option. All right, yeah. So I'd probably get Karaz. Yeah, go with your gut. I thought about selling. <laughs> I know all I thought about selling Nath last um, week. He bit me in the ass. So go with your gut. If that, if that's what you're feeling, then just jump on it. Look, man, the dude's not going to pull out 150s each week. If he pulls out 50s each week, and every now and then occasional 150, I'm cheering. But yeah, I don't know how often that's going to happen. I know he can score well, the tons, but... But the, the main reason why I'm going Hammer over Karaz is because I'm selling Teddy and I have 
Garrick and Holmes already anchoring me centre wing. So you're putting so, a hammer in the fullback. So you don't have to play him. Putting hammer in the fullback at the moment. I'm probably going to sub in for Gary. Doesn't matter which way. I'm either going to play him both, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm only getting him to bolster me fullback ranks later on. I think I can get Karaz later on, maybe for a hundred k dearer. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, then Muhammad Chigo doing something didn't think I would have unless for injury. He's selling Teddy for Karaz and moving players around, then selling Cheese for Wade Egan and using one boost for Blaw to Preston. I like it. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind it either. I think you've done all the, the right sort of moves for making the cash or the what, points. What was that first trade? Uh, Telly for, uh, Teddy for Karaz. So obviously moving a yeah. Garrick down or... I um so I'm almost doing the identical trades but I'm going Teddy to Hammer. Yeah. And probably get Craz maybe next week. Depending on how things go. Yeah. Uh, I mean I I personally I wouldn't touch Teddy, but if you are, that's probably the best option. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Kraz does look good this year. Alright, I'll just go and check out. Uh do you got anything on the live there? Alright, so I got a question for you then. Yep. Would you sell Bell? To Hammer or Teddy to Hammer? For me, Val at the moment, just because the drinky factor is massive, uh, massive out. I do, think you'll do we remember. Know if drinky, uh, if Val's scores are effective with or without drinky? Yeah, I think I think Val was scoring pretty well before drinky came on while Hammer was playing at fullback. So I think he, he was the one that was still getting a lot of it. So the first four weeks last year is. Probably a good determining factor. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he, seriously, if I remember correctly, the hammer wasn't feeding him right, and um, so he as, did it all himself. As soon as Drinky came back, it unlocked extra points in Val's game and the team's game because uh, Val kicks the goal. So it's an obvious win-win when they've got a ball player like Drinky. You know, well, if new fullbacks a weapon. Well, supposedly he goes okay. Like, I, I read something today about him. I don't know. Bro, you don't make the first grade side. Without seven injuries, but if you're good. Yeah, but, like, no, no, you've got to have... <laughs> no, but still, like, if yeah. he's a fullback... No, no, I know you mean. Like, still, you'd be putting someone else in, or you'd be putting Val back to fullback and then putting in, you know, even a back row or something to play at centre, if you had to. Well, Cohen has played centre. I know he's probably a bit past it now, but he has done it. Like, and I... I think Nanai and Lukey, if he's fit, could easily play. You reckon? Hey, no one can hear what he's saying, so it's irrelevant. Oh, yeah, cool. So, Lukey, what what do you got on last year's scores for Val? Uh, Val went a 16 in round one. Yep. Killed it. 49. Killed it. 106. Killed it. 31. Killed so not it. fantastic. And then Drinky came. He went a 75, 92, 53, 46, 74, 33. They so still didn't even really kill it then. Yeah, it wasn't until after round 14, really. Origin. Not Origin. Yep. Fuck Origin us. turns them on, bro. Uh, he'll come back. Queenslander! Yeah. Tell me he's got peptides in the water up there. Look, he'll come back and scores. Fuck yeah, hell. Mate, the haircuts he's they got give the, you people. He's got the best team for the last 15 years, and you just don't know how to play Origin. You just don't get it. Hell. All right, boys, i got a question for you. Yep. Hammer or Preston? Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm going Hammer. I, I think I think Hammer... Purely for cash grab purposes. Hammer. They could both be going in two rounds. Hammer, because I'm selling Teddy, who's leaking cash, and I don't have a second row who's leaking cash. Yeah, that's the other thing you got to look at. Where you leak going to leak your most cash, or are you prepared to take the hit of Teddy leaking the cash? Um... So yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, are you prepared to let if, ca- if, Teddy's if, cash flow uh, go yeah. up and down and just leave him as your season long save, keeper? Save those two trades where you're going to trade him out and then inevitably get him back in. My yeah. concern with Teddy is if Teddy's going to turn it on against anyone, it'll be against South. It'll be against Trell. Like I said, the rivalry is real. Okay, these things right. really can have an effect on the well, game. The, the big question is, I guess, I just thought of this. Do you see Teddy as a top three averaging fullback coming the end of the year? 
If yeah. Turbo's fit, Pappy's fit, Trill's fit. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Pong I do. Is fit. Yes, I do, because... There's another one I'm missing. Recently. Walsh. And there's another one too, but... If they're all fit, do you see Teddy being in your final team? Yeah. For me, I see Pappenhausen and Turbo as my run home pullbacks if they're both fit. Yeah, or Pappy Troll, both goal kickers. Depends how Souths are going mid-season. Turbo doesn't need to kick goals. I know he doesn't, It's but... more of the ifs, not wins again for me. Um, no, but it's not by. If you're talking about Teddy's price not being being irrelevant because you're keeping him season long. Yeah, Teddy played 20 games. If he's not in your end game, well, then he's not a season long keeper for the new. Then his price is relevant. Teddy played 20 games last year. The other two didn't play even 13. The other three didn't play 13. So so you don't have Turbo? Yeah, I've got Turbo. Oh. But he played 13 games last year. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't play 13 games. If Pappenhausen comes back after Origin fully fit... With back-to-back hundreds, are you not going to touch him because he only played 13 games last year? If Pappy comes back say... confident and strong, I'm fucking jumping in, bro. At 9.50. That's what I mean. Well, for me, I... Teddy's not in my end game. Trill, Paps, and Turbo are the top three fullbacks for me. See, I think, I think you're wrong, man. Teddy will... Oh, good chance I could be. Teddy, Teddy for me, like, yeah, granted, <coughs> this might be the time to not own Teddy. But after Origins, the time to own Teddy. He te- he tends to come home with a wet sail every year. I think you'll find in your little book of stats over Trill there. Trill beat him home last year, and Paps and Turbo were injured. All right, go go on prior <laughs> years. Like, Teddy's been out there constantly for fun. I get that, but Teddy's now thirty odd man. Trill he's and still Ted, got another Tr- one. And, yeah, I, he's still he's still the best pullback in the game. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'll not just taking any away from that. But Trill and Turbo are pups, bro. He literally Pats only has pup. one. He might literally only have one more in him at fullback. No, he just re-signed, bro. When did he re-sign? Like yesterday, yesterday or the day before. Oh, did he? For like yeah, two sweet. more, three more yeah. years. Oh, twenty twenty-five. Yeah. Well, that shuts down he's... this Joseph Sawali contract nonsense. He's going to Union. Yeah, probably. He's he's looked he's done something anyway. It was awkward timing when he decided. He's to... a British Lions tour. In 2025, the year after he comes off and in the World Cup in 2027. They'll want him. Yeah. Oh, they, they've they made no secret. They want him, and they're going to throw ridiculous money at him. Let him go. But it's just a question of, do you want to go and play that shit game, Joseph? Yeah. No. Well, you could be. Look, let's face it. You could it. be Blake Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting your nose fixed either. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, anything on the live? I do. So, uh, first of all, Andrew Somerville, Leo Thompson, or Nichols as a cheap NAS replacement? Nichols, by the sound of it, it's got the Nichols, higher break, high break even. even. And yeah. mate, Dolphins are coming out strong. Bennett's got Bennett's got the spirit in him to get Leo, it started at the very least. Leo Thompson will be starting now. Safidi gone too, and he'll probably play decent minutes, won't he? Safidi's gone long term. Did anyone ever answer nah, that? Jacob that got suspended and he didn't start last week anyway. Because Leo Thompson started, didn't he? Pretty sure you find he started at 13. Who's named on the bench there at the Knights? I think. He definitely started, but yeah. Leo Thompson started for years last week. It's a possibility. Um, I found the Knights fan has uh, no idea. He would have been blind. Yeah, Thompson starting at 10 this game. What time is the Knights game? What was uh, that? Sorry. Th- Thompson starting at 10 this game. Yeah. Uh, on the bench, you have Jacob Saifiti, Phoenix, Crossland, Jack Hetherington, and Tyson Gamble. Nah, it's a bit. bit... Brody Jones at 18. Jacob Saifiti obviously will drop off there. Frizz is gone too. And uh-huh. um, old mate's playing hooker this week because Braley's got a busted head. Oh, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong game. Stupid me. Jesus. Um, <laughs> there you go. What can I say? <laughs> Jacob, Jacob's suspended. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Braley's knocked out. Yeah, he was reading the wrong game. Yeah. That was, yeah. That's what I was, Last week's That's what I was thinking. KP's still asleep, I think. They might want to go and wake him up. So, yeah, didn't you want to have a rant earlier about uh, Scott Drinkwater versus Jacob Saifidi and what you would call the inconsistencies in the NRL judi- judiciary? You don't agree? 
Uh, I don't know. I didn't actually see Scott both Scott Drink order comes happen. in with a shoulder, leading with a shoulder and breaks jaws. Corey Hatch's jaws. Jaw. Yeah. And gets two weeks. Jacob Saifidi gets wrong footed by a inside ball and yeah, he pumped old mate. He's had to be sent off. But there was no harm done. He was all good. Bit. No, not being hit, but he was all good. And he gets, what was it, five weeks, five you said? Five weeks, yeah, with an early guilty plea, I think. And then yep. Jeremy Marshall King goes and just drops down on old mate's heel. Yeah, it's a pretty sad. two weeks. Where Fui Man, I don't know, I think it was not maybe last year or the year before. Was last year. Last year. Trials even, maybe. He was tackling someone and he just got swung around by momentum and accidentally landed on their heel and got five weeks. He because got he's got a reputation because he knocked out fucking Paps in Magic Ground. But, and that, that, that was where um, I don't think the right decision and common sense came into play. Like, they've just seen there is no common the sense. outcome. Well, a lot of times it, it seems to be the more elite the player that if they're injured, the offender gets more punished. Whereas if it's just a... a, a not, let's not say no-name player, but just a run-of-the-mill player... Okay. So, it doesn't seem to come into con- so consideration. So, Corey Oates, representative winger, high-profile player. Former representative winger. Gets a broken jaw in a tackle. Um, Jake Simpkins, is that his name? Yep, Jake Simpkins. I know it's his name. I'm just plain dumb. Yeah. And irrelevant from the West Tigers, gets tackled by Jacob Saifidi. No harm done. And Jacob Saifidi gets five weeks. Origin so, played role, man, no better. Look. Jake Saifi <laughs> played Origin? Yeah, he played last year. He and his brother both played Origin. For the Blues. You should know. Would have fucking gutted your team. I do know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just... It is. It's There's no consistency in there. They need one... You need one, either one judge or one panel that never, ever strays. Then you know. throwing Wade Graham's last week where he got three weeks if he didn't fight it. Or because he fought it and lost. Where do you rate that in between the Scythe E D one and the drink water one? Well again, I don't think there was malice I don't think there was malice in any of them. Like I don't think No I, drink, no, I don't think any player except for Denny Williams ever goes in with malice. Yeah. <laughs> Go Denny. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, like the drink water one was a shoulder charge, so that automatically has should have more repercussions. Yes, because you've run in shoulder charger in the middle of the non left, shoulder. Left in the air. Left in the air. We're in the non shoulder charge. Well let's be honest, he's not gonna shoulder charge Corey O standing on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're in the non shoulder charge era and he's come out and done a blatant shoulder charge. So I feed he's hung the arm out. Like, that's all he's done. He's, like you said, wrong-footed, and it's just natural reaction to try to grab the bloke. He's got him in an awkward position. Got yeah, him. but you can't just hang the arm out. And <laughs> no, well, he, he someone. got sent off. He got punished accordingly, I think. Then oh, I got, think two weeks for Jacob. The Marshall King one, where he's just deliberately dropped everything a he's got. On his ankle. Like, it's fucking, bro, it was hard to... Like, it's one of them things that try trying to eradicate hard, and that one there... Probably should have got the five weeks. You know, he should have got the five weeks out of all that. Well, a lot of the hip drop tackles, I think, are ch- ridiculous charges. Like, a lot of them are either momentum created from the attacker with old mate trying to tackle him and just getting swung in a certain spot, or it's just the way a natural tackle occurs. Like, you tackle someone, they run past you, you slip down behind them. Sometimes you fall on their heels. Yeah. Like, it happens. It's football. It's been happening fucking ever. That's like the crusher. And if they didn't bring in this syndesmosis shit and people just got up and played on, we wouldn't even be fucking worried about it. Yeah. But this Jeremy Marsh King one, the first time I was saying, I thought, hey, no, it's just another one of those fucking... It wasn't until you saw the replay the from behind. The one from behind where you can see his full sits down pretty much on his ankle and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, no, that is a bad one. Yeah. And then what do you get, two weeks? Three, I think two or three. You're right. Momentum definitely had a lot to do with it in that one. 
He was getting little man by a few big men. Who? Jeremy Marshall King. There was two other blokes in the tackle with him when he did it. That's half the problem. No, I don't think that is a problem. I don't think that even adds to it because old mate was pretty much stationary. And Jeremy Marsh King then just decided to drop his weight straight down without looking, but knowing where old mate's limb is. You're not dumb. I think, yeah, that's, that was a bad one for me. Yeah, there needs to be something done with consistency on it. Or just, yeah. There needs to be something done with this slowing down the play the ball, which everyone's trying to do. Everyone's really got the idea now of the quick play the balls, and the, all the players are trying to speed the game up. The defensive lines, some of them are just trying to get away with absolute dog shit still. And it's just horrible to watch. Like, okay, if, if the bloke stood in the tackle, concede. You know what I mean? But they don't. They keep him standing in the tackle. And then you hear this, hold, and then they bring him down to the ground. It's just like, no, stop wasting fucking time. Like, you guys have got this. It's called held. You, you know what I mean? Well, they're still taking two, three, four seconds to get off after held. It's just, so you're saying on, mate. 60 again is not, much, not enough of a deterrent? What's that? Are you saying 60 again is not enough of a deterrent? No, definitely not. Bring you back see the, full penalty? Well, you see the way it gets absolutely manipulated now. So you give him a, so give him a full penalty so he can have a shot at goal or a set restart wherever they want. But, uh, well, I don't know. I think that's I much know. more beneficial you kick, in kick my opinion. Touch, like, you get to keep the touch. Like, you can make 30, 40 metres where you're not getting that off yeah. a quick no, cut, well, off you, an extra set. Inside your 40, it's an automatic big penalty. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, so, still, but, but, but when you're on the attack, you don't... Oh, well, depends you, what but they'll, like, they'll routinely you, but you do it on first touch and you got the set restart <laughs> wherever you want, or you can kick for goal. Yeah. So if you get the 10, 15 metres out... Six again! On the third tackle... It's a three-man hit up into the middle, and then you, you, that's your play from there. Like That's where it's at. Like Whereas if you get your six again on the 48, you're too tackled out by the 20, you know? And then you kick, but not, not, yeah. a great att- not as great as an attacking yeah. kick as... Yeah. When you kick for touch and, and you started on the out. twenty yeah. and you've sent your three forwards, you're on you're crashing onto the right. to try line and or you set three set plays yeah. at them. Massive massive difference. Yeah. Um massive game change stuff. That's it. It's, you you think about it then as a defender I don't want to defend that. Yeah. But when they're forty or fifty out, second tackle, they are happy to defend another two tackles here. No dramas at all. Yeah. Well, the pressure's not on us, yeah, is it? You're not there two, two three metres out. That's cr- right. Big men crashing on top of you. It's shit. But, yeah, win the ring somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Con will tell you by the end of the season. Just keep Super listening. Ke- Supercoachchampion.com. If you're going to do a ring, I suggest you get on now. Um, not sure if we've got a promo code. Just tell them Supercoach360 sent you and want to buy a buck off. Thanks. Time's giving their money away. <laughs> I don't know if I've got the power to do any of that, but yeah, give it a go. I'm sure you don't. Oh. We're doing it, but go for it. Anyway, still got a couple of more questions in the live chat. Sorry. Uh, Brian Ings, what has happened to IPAP? Is he a sell? He was only 6% owned. Um, I was surprised at that. Starting with him was always going to be risky, yeah. man. Like, that's the problem. He's had two breakout seasons in a row, which is almost unheard of. Well, not two breakout seasons. He was just in a good team, and he showed his worth. Feeding Mitch Moses, feeding him the ball. Up. Now he's in a new team. With a great halfback. He scored 65 on the weekend. Done okay. Did he say 65 plus? Mitch Moses outscored him, but <laughs> on the weekend. It's also worth $400,000 more. But, yeah. Go, okay, Mitch. Um... Is IPAP a sell? IPAP, yeah. I would. Definitely. I'd go sideways, probably Toto at the moment. Yes. Mr. Consistent. Yes, and if if I wasn't going to go that way and I really wanted to, if, if I was having a struggler, I'd go down to a Katoa, and if I really wanted to make super, super mm. bank, I'd go down to that Preston's, and then... Mm. And you upgrade the shit out of everywhere. <laughs> that money you've got then after that's going to be unreal. Quickly, can I ask you guys a question? Uh, Egan Butcher. Thinking about it. Yeah, he be I'm on. He be my down to Preston's. Well, I said he's me steps tone to Harry. No, Egan Butcher. No, oh. wait, Egan. So, yeah, straight up. So this week, never should have had. I don't think, but yeah, so all right. 
I don't know what his break even is or anything. I'm looking to that. It's only fifty five or something. It's oh, not, so he's not he's not a he can wait priority sell, yeah. He could jag try this week and have two little price rises. But is he, if he's the guy you've got to sell to get to your um Preston your Prestons or, or something like that, I think he's the it's time to pull it. Yeah. Or or you look at sideways Katawa. Yeah. Well he's got a he's still nine percent owned, uh, Egan Butcher. And, uh, yeah, break even of 59. So I feel it's achievable. Yeah. He's not going to make Jake cash off that, though. He's not playing 80 either, I don't think. Even without the head knocks and stuff. <laughs> yes, head uh, knocks and send-offs. <laughs> oh, bro, that is the story Sick of my 2023. <laughs> Straight oh, up been, already. It has been fucking brutal the last couple of weeks with injuries and suspensions. And oh, I've been semi like I've just got a shit team. I've been semi. <laughs> I've been semi lucky with. I don't. I've only owned the cheese. I didn't have none of that. I didn't have Ford. I didn't have Chance. I didn't have none of them other ones that like sort of went to shit. People jumped on Ilias. People jumped on Drinky, Ponga. That's right. Yeah, it's heaps, man. Like. That people jumped on or already had in it, so I've dodged all them bullets so far. Lucky duck. Got cheese, but yeah, I've got shit everywhere. Else. I didn't bring him in, I just started with him. Yeah, you fucking. That was good last week, man. Yeah. Fuck it. But you did walk in here swinging. You walk around here swinging, going, oh, yeah, no, no, just, just an amazing, you know? No, well, my score wasn't great, but I was happy with how my team went and how it looked going into round two. Yeah. Round two started and shit hit the fan and come out with a mess on his face. Well, there was people that had five, six, five, six of them, like the, the whole lot. Like, they Jeez, had chance, poor, they had, yeah, yeah, like, like you poor bastard. And then still ended up scoring 800 odd or whatever, which wasn't bad. So. What? Wasn't good. I was one of those people, so I feel like I could say it. Oh, I was going to say, I'm one of those people and I want you to talk me up. <laughs> Nah, it was a horrible week. Let's move past it. It was just fucking horrible. But I'm taking away from it that I saved three trades in week one. So yeah. Okay. I saved two. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. I saved a boost. Well, I saved two, yeah, and a boost. I'm holding anything I can to get on. I haven't saved anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. What? You didn't use three trades and a boost last week, or three no, trades? No, I used two trades. Jesus. No boost, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah. How's two trades pan out? Shit. <sighs> shit. I should have, like, you know what? I weighed up the option of Welch and, um, Lindsay Collins. I thought, oh, Welch is a bit more highly owned. I thought, I don't want him sort of, like, getting away from me. So I jumped on Welch, whereas Collins was lowly owned. Only a couple of percent, like two, three percent owned. And I should have jumped on him because he's going to be that pod guy. Well, the score difference. Only only ten points or something, fifteen points, but just Lindsay Collins are really good out there. If you actually watch the game, he looked beast mode. But with JWH from Radley back this week, that's surely gonna affect him. Oh, I don't think by much. Welch what you got is what you got. And now Nils is gone. Even more expectations gonna be on him to carry the load. Anything He's that? pretty much the only experienced middle there now. Like, and, oh, yeah, to well, his ex- semi-experienced middle, but all right, got any other there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, got a couple more. Uh, <laughs> Dilbert Parmigiana. Yes, that go sounds Dilbert. legit. <laughs> like that sounds like that guy's real name. Fuck yeah! Your parents must be interesting people. I like you. So. Dilbert asks... Mr. Uh, Parmigiana to you. Mr. Parmigiana. Mr. Uh, Parmigiana, Mr. Parmigiana. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. As soon as I said it. I was... <laughs> uh, is it worth holding on to Deedon? In brackets, he has Dewey. Not sure I should get Katoa. Hold on, hold on. It's multiple questions. We'll start with that first one. Is it worth uh, holding on to Deedon? Is it worth uh, holding on to Dearden? Uh, he comes into a good run, but... He's had a good run. Yeah, well, he's not scoring great. His break-even's massive, so what? logic says yes. What are you at? 
We over there. Go on, go on. Use your words. No, I feel he kind of like a vow. I brought vow because I know what vow's gonna do. Just hurry up and fucking do it. He brought Deirdre. Expecting, I don't know what Deirdre to do, but well, Deirdre started off well last year. You had him yeah, yeah, he did. He started last year. Yeah. Um, I think the draw was very appealing to a lot of people to bring in some cowboys early. They don't have a buy until rather late. I think there was just a lot of appeal to bringing in a, a guy like, like, don't get me wrong, I didn't bring him in myself, but I looked at Deaton a couple of times just on, remember he started probably five, six rounds, got up to decent money too, didn't he, Louis, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, you he gained, gained, gained two, three hundred K, I'm pretty sure, something like that. You could go across nearly to anyone with his money by that, so I'd say, I'd say this, the appeal in trying to pot on with him. Yeah. Um, I'd hang on. So, Mr. Parmesan's next question. Mr. Bob Parmesan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not sure I should get Katoa. Once to getting Karaz and Hermoso by selling Teddy Thompson and then selling Jaden Braley to Grant. I can definitely get in some Grant. Yeah. Um, and you've got to get rid of Jaden Braley if he was your starting hooker for sure. Grant's yeah. the man. If you can, any way to get to Grant, get to Grant. Definitely. I mean, uh, you, look, you might be at a stepping stone to Grant through Egan, but it's going to take you two trades. Is it worth possibly $300,000? Like, it's only one trade, really. Because you tra- have to use one trade to get to Harry anyway. Yeah, so you're only yeah, using one point. additional trade. Well, was he going to go, Hammer or Karaz? Wait, no, he said Egan. No, Joe suggested Egan, sorry. Sorry, I, don't... I think he was going Hammer or Karaz, so I'm going to say that if he's going Hammer, he can probably get Harry. If he's not going... Yeah, sorry, he wants to get in Karaz and Hammer by selling Teddy Thompson and then selling Bradley for Grant. Yeah, so he'd be Isaac Thompson. So I'd, I'd, I'd do the first two and then probably take Egan for a week or two. Get those couple of big yeah. price rises then out of him and then... Burn an extra trade for $250,000, $300,000, hopefully. Or you can just or have Harry can, Grant. Or you can just keep riding it and... Or you can just have Harry Grant origin. from... Or you can just have Harry Grant right now. Or you can have, Harry, or you can have Wade Egan right now. Yeah. And an extra $250,000 to upgrade someone else to a gun next week. I think if we get to the point where Con's agreeing with me, you should definitely listen to Burks. Yeah, uh, Mr. Parmesan. What we're going now, boys? Uh, Denny Sackle. Hey, Sackle. Hey. Uh, question for Bergs. Yes, mate. If Latrell takes Manu's head off again, are you allowed to boo him? Oh fuck yeah! Uh, I'm touching on this now. Fuck it. Um, Only if you're a Roost fan. Okay. No. Well, Latrell's had another rough week, guys. Um, <laughs> sorry, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going there. Fuck it. The trail's had a rough week, guys. Um, he's been booed from a crit. Yes, what was said was fucked up, right? What was said? I'm not going to there. I'm not saying it. I'm not going there. Has it been exposed what was said? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, fuck. I'm going to get out my there was, there was, there was racial, racial and animal <laughs> things all thrown in the mix. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, what, this is what needs to happen. If he's getting so fucking butt hurt, now, I know I've said this a couple of times. Getting what? So fucking butt hurt. Like, he's going in there and he's whinging, saying it's hurt me emotionally. It's hurting me like, fucking come on, bro. A 13 or 14 year old kid yelled this at you, who looked like his balls hadn't even dropped yet. How are you getting upset by this? You, this is the time where they should have said, right, so and grab that kid. Send Junior Totola or someone over there to grab that kid, take him into the dressing sheds, and say, now can you please repeat that to the crowd? Because, let's face it, there's a lot like, of some big dudes in, <laughs> in that Rabideau site, and it'll be a fucking life lesson to anyone that wants to yell out racial or slurs to anyone. Like, you go and send, like I said, like... Yeah, right, it's a I'll great way to meet half the was, team. Can I say what was said? Or is it too harsh? Anyway, I'll probably... Oh, should, I don't know. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm look saying up, yes. Look up what was said. <laughs> he, call, he called him, like, racial racial slur. Like, it wasn't, you know, like, it wasn't nice, whatever. But 
again, same thing. Have wasn't, anything to do with cheese? Wasn't a grown man, nah. Wasn't a grown man, wasn't anything like this. This was Is a kid in a rooster's jersey. It was. It was a little kid. Like, you should have seen it. It looked like a fucking peep squeak, man. In a rooster's jersey at a and Panthers game. Yeah. Someone, 15. 15 it was. Yeah, and, it, like, literally, he was fucking... Ah, oh. so he's gone. Oh, I can't do it. I'm having a rough week. People are abusing me in the crowd. Bro, you're at a footy game. I'm sorry. I've yelled that out at me, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Playing. Well, you know, I remember that day, man. Tizza were out there at bloody Hawkesbury, just giving it to everyone that played for Hawkesbury. We were on, on the Hebo side, and then we decided halfway through the game we'll jump back onto Hawkesbury. So we started giving it to Hebo people. And it was great fun that day. Like, Everyone had a good day. Everyone seen the fun side of what we were doing too, you know what I mean? Like we were grilling everyone. But there was a time and a place. Now, they could have took this kid and taught him the right way. <laughs> Con remembers it. You remember? No, I was just thinking the time and the place was like the 1950s, bro. <laughs> no, well, you can't. Just because everyone was doing it and everyone thought it was okay doesn't mean it is okay. <laughs> it was West. We are getting away with a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I get that, but... Yeah, it's it's not good, bro. Like, doesn't no, he... matter if a fifteen year old kid saying it to him or a seventy year old man saying it to him. This fellas had to put up with this shit his whole life, bro, and he's emotionally affected by it. He's scarred by uh, it, so it brings up traumatic memories for him. Also, so, also nobody professional... can take away how he feels from this situation. Doesn't matter who says it to him or how they say it. He feels how he feels, bro, and that's. He's right athlete. to feel no, that. It doesn't gotta, matter if he's, gotta remember. he's still a human being, bro. Yeah, it doesn't he matter is. if you're an athlete or not, man. Well, straight up, he's a role model, man. And that's the thing. Like, like he should be able to go to work and do his job without somebody calling him a whatever the fuck they called him, man. It, it doesn't matter if you're paid to be an NRL player or you're paid to be a bricklayer or you're paid to be a, a waitress. You should be able to go to work and not be either vilified for being... Sexually orientated one way, or one religion, or one race, or nothing. It shouldn't oh. matter. You should be able to go to work, do your job, and not be fucking ridiculed for it, or criticised, or abused. Oh. Like, it's just not right, man. Like, we're living in 2023 now. That's right, and I don't like, understand why people need to get, get this shit together. Affected by words, and I, it's not just this kid. Obviously, he's getting it from somewhere. More than likely, an inner circle of family or friends, close friends or something, <laughs> they all need to have a good, hard look at themselves in the mirror too, and say, "What the fuck am I doing? Well, if you I'm go, a piece of shit. I need to wake up to myself. Everyone's go, the same. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you do. We're all human beings, and we all deserve the same shit." If you go check through society, though, people calling it every like every single day, bro. You hear it every single every single oh, day. Oh yeah, it and doesn't make what? it right. Half the times, it's their mate saying it. You know what I mean? So it's look, automatic in culture. Right, look, if if you have your really tight, in close friend circle like we do, where we can call our yeah, black yeah, mate yeah, jigs, yeah, 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 yeah. that's totally different, bro. I know that is. We, I know we can that do is. that in and amongst ourselves. <laughs> but if we still go out and call him jigs in public, as much as we think that's okay... Other people are going to look at us and go, holy shit. I know that. I know That's that, not okay. And I'm... they don't want their kids to turn around and say, hey, what's Jigs mean? Can I call my black fellow Jigs? Like, it, it leads to places. Like, con, con. And, and, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just going to have to pull you up on that. I think Berg's got it too. Um, it's, it's become taboo, especially in recent times, for white people to refer to black people as theirs. You can't say my black people. <laughs> well, I'm calling him Jig, so what's it matter? But, well, I mean, Somebody get this Jigaboo out of here. <laughs> oh, that's all for white chicks. That's a movie reference. All right, we got to go. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next really? week. Yeah. It's in culture, but... I think we're done anyway. Yeah, we're going to argue this in a minute. <laughs>